reporting and documentation are three very important duties for the health care provider. Because you spend more time with the client than other members of the care team, you are more likely to notice daily changes in your client's condition. Observing and reporting these changes provides vital information that the nurse and doctor rely upon to make decisions about the client's care. It is important to develop good observation skills. Use all your senses to observe what is occurring with your client and the home environment. Use your eyes to notice changes in your client's appearance in the condition of the home. Use your ears to listen to what your client tells you about his or her feelings and experience. Use your sense of touch to notice changes in skin temperature, moisture, or dryness. Use your sense of smell to observe smells in the home, such as spoiled food or mold. Changes in the way your client's body smells can be caused by incontinence of urine or stool poor hygiene or illness. Your observations should include your client's physical, emotional, and mental condition. Be aware of changes in your client's skin color, sleeping habits, weight, pain levels, appetite, and speech. Be aware of rashes, discharges, swelling, or other physical changes. Observe for changes in your client's mood. Depression, anger, anxiety, or despair affect quality of life and may relate to other imbalances. Pain, for example, can make your client feel frustrated, irritable, angry, or depressed. Listen to what your client says about how he or she is feeling. Notice changes in your client's mental state, such as disorientation, confusion, memory loss, or an inability to concentrate. Are you okay? There are two types of observations, objective and subjective. Objective observation is factual or measurable. For example, Mrs. Kanye's weight is 220 pounds. Subjective observation is based on Personal experience, opinion, or what your client or family member tells you. It may or may not be factual. If your client tells you, I think I've lost weight, that is a subjective comment because it is not based on measurable fact. I think uh, like last night I had some popcorn. You know, it looks satisfying. I think I lost some weight. Really? Okay, well, why don't we go in and um, weigh you real quick? When you weigh Mr. Jones, you find that he has lost five pounds since the last time he was weighed two weeks ago. Well, it looks like you did lose some weight. Now you have factual and measurable information to report. Here is another example of the difference between subjective and objective reporting. Mr. Jones, who has a history of allergies, complains of itching on his forearm. He tells you it's probably from a bite. Looking at the three red areas, you assume that he is correct, even though neither of you saw it happen. <coughs> Reporting it as a bite is subjective because it is based on assumption and opinion rather than fact. To report your observation objectively, you would state that there are three red raised areas about a half an inch in diameter on his left forearm, and the client complains of itching. I'm visiting with Mr. Jones today, and I thought I would report and let you know that I see three red raised areas about half an inch on, of diameter on his left forearm, and I thought you would like to know that. He believes it might have been an insect bite, but I'm not quite sure about that. This is an objective report because it is factual and measurable. Reporting is done verbally by phone or in person. 
report any changes in your client's physical, emotional, and mental condition to your supervisor. Events that put the client in danger, such as falls, deep wounds, or chest pain, must be reported immediately. It's always better to report an observation, even if you think it's unimportant or you're not sure about it, rather than risk your client's well-being by not reporting it. Report if the client does not follow medical directions, such as refusing to take medications. Report unsafe working conditions or issues with family members. Become familiar with the signs and symptoms of abuse and report any suspicions of abuse to your supervisor. Changes you must report include falls, chest pain, severe headache, difficulty breathing, confusion or memory problems, sudden weakness or loss of mobility, high fever, loss of consciousness, bleeding, swelling, especially in the feet, changes in bowel habits, bruises, abrasions, or other signs of possible abuse, and abnormal pulse, respiration, or blood pressure. The care plan describes the client's health condition and physical limitations. It describes the methods and procedures that must be used by the members of the care team. Everyone involved in the client's care follows the care plan. Documentation is a written record of activities you performed and important observations you have made during the client visit. Documentation is also called recording or charting and it becomes part of the client's medical record. The medical record is a legal document and its contents are confidential. It's important to document accurately because should a problem arise, documentation may be used in court as evidence. Your documentation is proof that you have followed the procedures and methods defined in the care plan. You should also document what you did not do and why. For example, you were instructed to help your patient walk, but he couldn't walk because he felt nauseous. For legal and medical reasons, documentation should be factual, brief, neat, and easy to read and understand. What you document should be medically important and useful information. Use a black ballpoint pen. If you make a mistake, mark a single line through the word or sentence and write your initials next to that. Never erase or use correction fluid. Do not leave any open spaces. Use appropriate abbreviations. Check with your agency regarding approved abbreviations. Never make up your own. Use proper spelling and language when documenting. Use a medical dictionary if you are not sure of spelling. Make sure the client's name is on each page of the chart. Never document before you have completed a task. Document immediately after the visit so you can remember important points. Flow sheets and checkoff sheets simplify the documenting process. They are legal documents and are part of the medical record. A checkoff sheet follows the care plan. The care provider records the observations and tasks completed for that day. A flow sheet graphically shows progressive changes in the client's health and gives the care team an easy way to see patterns such as weight loss or gain or changes in blood pressure. It will show a week or more of recordings by one or more staff members. To use checkoff sheets and flow sheets correctly, read the instructions carefully be sure that the sheet is for the correct client. Initial the right procedure on the right day and the right time. Never initial any procedure you did not do. 
write your complete signature on each sheet. Usually there is a place to do so at the bottom of the page. When you use good observation, reporting, and documentation skills, the care team has the benefit of up-to-date information on your client's condition, and they can make changes to the treatment plan as needed. In this way, your clear, factual observations and recording are vital to your client's care.